Hello and welcome to another episode of Never On Site. Hi, this is Joseph and joining me as usual is Mayur. So this week has been a week of upsets, uh, starting from uh, right from the City match, the Arsenal uh, match, which we didn't expect Everton to come out and play so well under uh, Sean Dyche uh, in the first game. And uh, City eventually couldn't capitalize and uh, they lost as well and also uh, Liverpool uh, losing to uh, Wolves and they were actually thrashed 3-0 by Wolves so so we'll be discussing this and a lot more in this episode of Never On Side so let's get into it right so this yes. so you have um, gone through all the matches have you watched some of these matches I think the Chelsea Fulham match was kind of like a template Chelsea um, performance where they struggled to create much chances, but they were kind of solid defensively. And uh, the big um, positive for them is that uh, James is back and they will be getting that thrust from the wing backs now, um, especially when Chilwell and uh, James start playing regularly and when they're fit enough. So that is a positive for uh, Potter and also for the fact that uh, he has a very bolstered side right now. And um, uh, for the fact that they even had to take out Aubameyang's name from the Champions League. So that's how big the squad is. And uh, the the first match you would notice here is Everton winning against Arsenal, like I mentioned in the intro. So this was a big surprise. But looking at the Everton side, I believe that this is a perfect Sean Dyche side. You have such bulky players in the form of Onana, um, Decore, um, Tarkovsky. Uh, you have Calvert Lewin up front, who is also uh, like huge. So you have five, six players who are like very tall, very aggressive, very uh, athletic players. Uh, so I think Everton have a good chance of escaping this year if um, Daesh is can still get, on the way. Yeah, if he can get these players to perform at this level because Arsenal really struggled to uh, dominate at any point in time. Even the pressing that Everton had, like when they wanted to sit back, they absolutely sat back uh, without giving an inch of space to um, Odegaard or Saka or Martinelli uh, to a point where Odegaard and Martinelli had to be uh, substituted out. And uh, so it was very surprising how Arsenal couldn't break them. And that might be because of the new manager bounce but i believe that this team uh, don't deserve looking at on paper that team don't deserve to go down so let's see what happens and uh, leicester back to winning uh, base they trashed uh, aston villa 2-4 and um, brentford winning 3-0 again um, and uh, brighton continuing their good form uh, with uh, Sole goal from uh, Mitoma, who uh, is a revelation in this Brighton side under Disabri. And uh, the big match was uh, United versus Crystal Palace, which I watched. So, uh, United were cruising uh, uh, towards the uh, first half, and uh, Casemiro uh, shouldn't have got involved in that. Uh, and that's why he got a red card. I'm not sure if it warranted a red card late. In, in terms of um, uh, putting out uh, a marker that you can't uh, put your arms on someone's neck, I get that. But other than that, I don't think it was malicious. I think he was trying to stop him from fighting with the uh, other players. That's uh, Stop Hughes from fighting with the other players. That's what I thought my first reaction was. But then when you go look at the uh, VAR uh, monitor, you can see that he was shown an angle where it's clear that he is kind of grabbing onto the neck. So, no complaints there. And that's why I think United didn't appeal because there was a there was a news that if they failed uh, in their appeal, Casemiro could have got a four-match penalty. Like So, that's why they, we didn't appeal as such. Yeah. And then, and uh, I think uh, yeah. yeah, Casemiro has gone has done more malicious challenges than this. I have seen him in La Liga against <laughs> playing against us. So this was one of the most silliest. But yeah, <laughs> red card, yeah, at the end of the day, we also discussed when the red card was given. Yeah. It looked very silly, but yeah, he should have gone without his hands, maybe a chest bump or something which might yeah, have stopped. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, 
and then the big surprise is wolves have turned the tables uh, they are unbeaten in the last three matches or something like that like uh, so uh, they are um, turning into a good side now and they have defeated liverpool 3-0 and uh, i'm sure you must have heard of um, crops uh, usual cribbing after the match what did he say like so he said uh, in the second half they just had one shot on target or one ball which they took it in liverpool's half that's why the huh. goal won't be counted something on hmm. that lines and as a response wolves on twitter put out uh, a score line of 2-0 and cutting out the third goal uh, because klopp said that that is that is savage from the wolves admin yeah and uh, newcastle versus west ham newcastle went uh, ahead 1-0 thanks to Wilson, but uh, West Ham showed character and Paqueta scored uh, the equalizer. It was a KG match, to be honest. And uh, coming to Sunday matches, um, the Spurs City match, which was also uh, uh, as a surprise, which was a big upset because we thought City would win it. But uh, Spurs, even though they didn't have Conte in the sideline, um, played really well in terms of how they press City, how they decided to keep the ball whenever they wanted and uh, eventually the quality of Kane showing. Yeah, Actually, this was the perfect game for Spurs. Like They play like playing these kind of teams where they can counter-attack and everything. We saw the goal, but it didn't come through a counter-attack, but rather than a mistake, uh, than a counter-attack. But yeah. they had a lot of chances on counter-attack as well. So, uh, it was an interesting game and City, as usual, struggled a lot. And Spurs were very smart while pressing. They pressed when it was needed. Just Hoiberg. Hoiberg was the uh, trigger. So, he, he yes. Well. yes. And that was a common mistake. Like I think uh, that would have been uh, practice and training. We know Hoiberg have, has already done it twice or thrice this season where he yeah. has uh, tried to go, on, go up on the CDM of the opposite uh, team and then uh, flicked the ball from him and passed it to an attacker and they have scored a goal. So, a bad press from Rodri, bad selection from Rodri as well. So, mm. a lot of things involved in that goal but we can definitely, we thought it would be a week where the title race is back on track uh, with Arsenal dropping points and everyone expecting City to come out with three points. Right. But again, it's still there and now looks like uh, United has a better opportunity to finish challenge City probably uh, for a second spot. Let's look at that that way i'm not right. sure but yeah that there are chances about that as well yeah because something which we have to discuss is what is happening with city right now arsenal it might be a blip in form just for for that game but city are actually struggling in terms of um, building a play in terms of involving Haaland. this was the first match in which Haaland didn't have a shot on target or a shot um, like in his uh, short city career and it was really uh, glaring how City couldn't bring him into the um, attacking, um, like attacking faces. So, what is going on in City? Like, do you have any idea what is happening? Is it is it the fact that there are some like rumors are there saying that a lot of the senior figures are unhappy at City, and with these um, FFP uh, cloud blooming over city about um, like players have to decide their uh, contract as well i think rk laporte and couple of players have to renew their contracts as well so if some issue happens at city that is also something that these players have to consider like so yes so in the recent interviews pep mentioned how the senior players are not uh, really giving their best like uh, they have won already what could be one apart from the Champions League, but in a league sense as well. So, Pep clearly mentioned that they need to uh, focus back and uh, give that spirit which Pep has been always talking about. Uh, and as you mentioned here, the senior players didn't perform and we saw why he benched KDB, right? Alvarez is a good presser uh, in the 4-2 game which they won uh, in the Premier League, the reverse fixture. There was a very good... Uh, Alvarez came on and created a lot of havoc and kept Benton Core in check. But this time around, they had a way to pass around have Alvarez as well. And generally, Alvarez is known to press, but they were really smart. Spurs were really smart uh, in this game. But it will be interesting to see how City come back and uh, like how they play. Because we know Pep 
now has shifted his approach like now he likes to play it safe rather than uh, we can see arsenal and city almost play the same style but arsenal's game is very interesting and you uh, feel that but as of now this season city has been very very playing very safe like pep has refused to give away the ball and that what he thinks is that will avoid uh, mistakes and everything but we saw yeah. how a mistake was taken by spurs around uh, yeah. the same so something uh, which is very noticeable between city and arsenal is the fact that as soon as arsenal gets the ball everyone starts running towards the opposition goal the um, the ball passing um, spectrum if you if you look at it it's always linear it's always attacking wise they don't fear losing the ball as much as someone like a city or what pep um, uh, fears but arsenal always counters so quick like they are on the move so fast but city are always a bit conscious about losing the ball uh, or uh, like they want to play the safe pass always and it lacks uh, it lacks because uh, the the runners like sterling used to do that job very well of running into yeah. space and giving you yeah. the outlet but now we have seen mahrez is a player who likes the ball on his feet krilish is yeah, a player right. who likes the ball on his right. feet yes right so right. we have seen that and foden is the one who can make the change but uh, there has been some i don't know maybe issue tra- uh, while training or probably some injuries i am not sure but foden has also missed a lot of games since the comeback of the club football uh, so it will be interesting to see how pep comes up with this because he has lost a lot of players who like to be the outlet and run into spaces he just now right, has right. alvarez uh, with him so it will be definitely interesting how he comes back from this and how uh, whether he can challenge if arsenal drop any points ahead or uh, whether it will be more of a fight for a second third place rather than the right. title yeah, yeah. So, and one more match is left uh, for this game week. It's between uh, United and Leeds, the uh, one of the biggest rivalries in uh, English football, and it will be happening tonight at one thirty um, in the Standard Time. So it's a match we are all looking forward to, especially uh, because me and Mayur have a triple captain uh, Rashford this time, and I think we have. Uh, we are happy with anything that we get out of this match of this game, right? Because we already yes. got around twelve points from Rashford. Yes. So uh, before going on to fantasy, let's move on to the other leagues. Uh, a few 